In today's video, we're going to take a look at the basics of Excel's filter options. Excel's filter options can come in really handy when you work with large data tables. Now, there is a lot of options there, so I'm going to split this into two videos. In this video, we're going to cover the basics, and in the next video, we're going to take a look at more advanced options. Here's a sample list of data. We have information on channel, product, date, and sales value. On this data set, we'd like to place a filter. Now, the quickest way of putting a filter in place is just click anywhere inside your data set and then do Control Shift L and you get these icons on the header. To clear the filter, press Control Shift L again. Now, another way of putting the filter is to go from home to sort and filter and click on filter. I'm just going to press Control Shift L again to get rid of the filter. And yet another way of just putting a filter here is just by right mouse clicking. So let's say I'm only interested to get the list of shirt blue. I just have to right mouse click here, go to filter and say filter by selected cells value. So this filters out only the lines that have shirt blue in there. Now you can see that when you get this blue font on the row numbers. The other cells are actually there, they're not deleted, they're just hidden. And you can see on the bottom that filter gives six out of 26 records. You can also make individual selections. So if I go here and clear this filter from product, let's say I'm interested in website sales and affiliate site sales. So I would click this, I would deselect everything, then click on affiliate site and website, and I say, okay, I get my list here. Then if I'm interested on, let's say, anything that, for example, would start with shirt, I can go here and instead of deselecting and looking for all the ones that have shirt here, I could actually use a wildcard directly in the search box. So I could put that star sign, okay, that's the sign of the wildcard, and I can put shirt. And I need to put the star sign again to give me anything after shirt. A star sign before means that it could also be called blue shirt or white shirt. So shirt doesn't have to be the first word. And a star sign after means that there can be other things coming after this. Now I can see that it automatically put a tick mark for everything that had shirt in it. And I can do that right here with the site as well, because the word site is also in affiliate site and in website. If we select everything and here I just put site, it automatically makes that selection for me. To take away this filter from here, you can go through each one and say clear filter, but this can be quite annoying. So one way is to go to home, to sort and filter and clear this filter. Or another way is just to press Control Shift L two times. So let's say I have this filter on and I have this filter on, then I would just press Control Shift L to take away the filter and then Control Shift L to put back the filter. But this way I know that my filters are all clear. You can also filter by color. So if for some reason you want to highlight these cells in, let's say, this color, and you want to highlight these in, let's say, a green color, and then you want to filter by this green color, you just have to go to the filter arrow here and then do filter by color. And it already picks up the colors that you have underneath it. So I just click this, I get my list. If you want to copy the result of a filter, all you have to do is press Ctrl A to highlight the area and then press Ctrl C. You can see that only these lines are copied. Then you go to a new tab and you press Ctrl V, right? So copying this way only copies the filtered rows and there is nothing here that's hidden in the middle. I'm just gonna press escape and then Ctrl Shift L to open up the filter, and I'll just do Control shift l again. If you're working with dates, you have a lot of automatic date filter options in here. You can say, just show me the data for this month, right? So I'm in February right now, 
and that's the sales I made, let's say in February. I can also say, show me data for last month or even show me data year to date, right? So that would give me in this case, January and February data, right? Or you can even look between two dates. So I can select between from here. I get directed to custom auto filter. It says if date is after or equal to. Now the good thing is you don't have to try to figure out in what format should I put in the date. You can make the selection from here. Let's say I want anything from the 10th of January until the 15th of February. You have the and option already selected, which in this case is correct because it should be after or equal to this date and before or equal to this date and say, okay, that gives me only those lines of data. Now let's take a look at how we can use the or condition. So I'm just going to clear the filter here and let's go to channel. For example, remember how I put the star sign here to look for site, right? To use a wildcard, you can also go and select a specific filter option for that. So under text filter, you have the contains option. So for contains, I can also just put in site in here. Then you don't need to use the wildcards. Now let's take a look at the or option. Let's do an example on product. I'm going to go to text filter to custom filter and look for blue or white products. Okay. So we can say it contains blue or it contains white. Now let's say I was interested in the totals that I see here. So if I highlight this range, I can see on the bottom that that's the sum of my filtered area. If you use the normal sum function here, right? And we go from all the way from five to 30, you see the entire sum of the data set, which also includes those hidden cells. Right? And this is not something that you might want. In that case, you can use the subtotal formula or the aggregate formula. So subtotal is very simple to use. You just have to select what type of total you want. So in this case, it would be number nine for some, and then the range that you wanted sum. And this by default is going to exclude any hidden cells. Okay. So it's only going to total what you can see here. What I suggest though, is that if you have your data set up like this, it's always best to create an Excel table out of it. The table is going to give you a lot more benefits. So you'll have the filtering benefits that we saw right now, but in addition, you have a lot more benefits to make a table out of this data. What I'm going to do is let's just unfilter and go back to our raw data set. I'm just going to press control T on this data set. Does your table have headers? I can see the area it's selected is correct and my table does have headers. So I'm going to say, okay, that is going to activate a new tab for you. That's called table tools. And first of all, what it does is that it gives you this default look for a table, which you might not want. So you can immediately go and clear that from here to go back to the look you had before. If you forget this shortcut key to insert a table, you can go to insert and click on table. Okay. So in this case, it's deactivated because it's already turned into a table. One advantage of the table is that you don't need to remember that subtotal formula. You can very easily add a total row to your table here, and you can select how you want the total to be. In this case, for the sales, we want it to be summed. Let's say I also want a total here, but I just want the count of shirts. And this total and count are based on the filter. So let's say we just want to filter for blue. That's the count and that's the total. Now tables have more benefit than just this, because if your formulas are referencing the table and you add more data to the table, the formula gets updated. If you have charts that are referencing the table, the chart gets updated or pivot tables that are referencing the table your pivot table data range automatically gets updated. So I really recommend that you use tables 
because with tables, you don't just get these filtering options that we saw before, but you get a lot more than that. Now in the next lecture, we are going to take a look at how we can use advanced filter. Advanced filter is not sitting on the home tab. Instead, it's sitting on the data tab and it's sitting right here. In the next tutorial, I'll take you through the benefits of this. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates when new videos come out.